Hey guys. So for this week I wanted to start working on a, uh, a quest system that will allow the player to go up to NPCs, speak to them, accept uh, a quest, and then have that quest go into a quest log. And then you'll be able to complete the objectives on the quest, which right now I have set up for three different quest types, which are... Uh, Kill quests, you know, kill X enemies or um, uh, kill kill quests, uh, delivery quests. So you know, bring these items to this NPC, and then I have crafting as well because crafting will be a big part of the game. Um, so you know, craft one tool or craft three uh, leather armor types of le leather armor, something like that. Um, but those are the categories I came up with to start. And before I go into the the scripts and everything I'll just let you know the, the beginning part of what's set up here so you go into the game and my character here and one of the things I added in blender I made a uh, th some 3d text so you can see this uh, yellow exclamation point bobbing up and down on the guy's head um, so when a quest is available this icon on the NPC will show and I actually made a also made run and walk so press tab to switch between both and then I also have crouch which I did before but I was just fooling around with it and making sure that the, the roll is, is not like super fast anymore it's like a, a decent speed I guess for the run anyway um, so I walk up to the NPC and when the player interaction collider comes in contact with the NPC, it uh, will prompt the speak. And right now I have it for speak because eventually I just want to have like two separate, like, you know, there's a quest or there's a um, just dialogue so the player could choose what they want to do rather than immediately go into and speak to the NPC and, and get the quest. Um, there should be a separate like chat feature and then uh, maybe some other dialogue options when you first interact with the NPC, uh, whether it be give gift or something like that. Um, but for now, I set it up for uh, just so the basics are set up. So E, e will be speak, so you click E, and then I know that. Um, the cyan color exclamation point would represent the quest is now displayed. So once I click, you know, show quest or whatever the icon is going to be, the actual quest will pop up with the requirements and rewards. If you, so you could determine if you want to do it or not. And then um, if you do, if you don't, you could exit it and it resets the dialogue. If you do, you click accept quest and then I have it set for blue which is which would be active so until the quest is actually completed and actually before I do that so if you on trigger enter it shows like the NPC name and then when you go away it uh, it goes away so um, yeah, so while it's blue and it's active, you can you do whatever you need to do, you know, kill the enemies or gather some items. And then once you have, you know, the items in your inventory for the delivery quest, or if you have the crafted items, you know, you crafted three items, or if you killed three enemies um, of a specific type or a specific item for the other quests, this will uh, become green then. And that will represent that you know you've completed the objectives, which I'd like to show here too, which is another another piece of this, and just show you the objectives and how much you've completed. And then this will turn green to indicate to the player that you can go up to them, and then um, there will be another dialogue dialogue option for you know complete quest. You can complete it, you'll get the rewards, and then go on with your day. Um, so that's the basic setup right now that I have uh, and now I will go into the scripts of how everything works and the process that I went through over the past week 
All right, so going to the scripts here. We start off with the quest manager, which has um, an inactive quest list, active quest list, and completed quest list. Now, how I want to set it up, then I'll go back to Unity here to show the uh, quest manager. So eventually, I want a resources folder with all the scriptable quests that I've made. And I'll just type in, actually, I'll go to the folder here, so where it is. Right now, it's not in the resources folder because I'm just trying to test it out. But I made a scriptable object, which is called quest. Um, and so this way, I can create an asset, create the quest, and then it comes up as new quest. And now each quest, now I use pesky beetles as, a, as the first one. Um, so just in case, you know, the, the farmer's like, oh, you, I can't farm. You know, can you just kill these like level one beetles or whatever? So the quest title, quest name, uh, the quest type, as I mentioned before, kill, deliver, craft, um, quest status. So all st quests will be inactive until they're um, actually accepted by the player. And, that, and then they'll become active and go into the quest log of the player if the quest log is not full. Um, so that's, that'll be shown in one of the scripts. NPC ID is important because that's how I redistribute or distribute the quests at the start of the game. So based on the quest number and the NPC ID, that's how the quest will be distributed to each of the NPCs. And then once they're distributed, then the exclamation point will pop up and say, you know, this quest is available for you to uh, accept. Um, nothing here yet, but this is, I think this is gonna make this part of like the dialogue. So when the quest prompts up, it, it'll, it'll say, you know, uh, as, a, as a description, you know, Pesky Beetles is the title, and then um, somewhere in the middle there, uh, da, da, da. that will be like, you know, the quest start of saying, can you do this for me? You know, can you gather these items for me? The middle text will be after you accept it and say, you know, um, show you kind of like a status of where you're at. Say, so, oh, you still need to kill two more uh, enemies or something like that. Or uh, uh, I'm still waiting on that, that quest. Uh, depending on the NPC, I'm, I haven't thought of a dialogue, but that's basically what the middle text would be. And then end text would be, you know, great job. Thanks for this. And, and then it'll hand out the gold reward, XP reward. And then if there's an item. Um, that will be shown as well. And then these are for the three different quest types. You have the enemy type required, how many kills are required, and then how many you've done uh, currently. Now I'm pretty much I, I'm planning on setting this up with an event system. I'm starting to learn more about those. And event systems will trigger, so when you kill a certain enemy, I'm gonna have it trigger to a, uh, a stat tracker, which will you know register that specific enemy has been killed so it keeps a counter of that and then um, you know if a status change it'll, it'll check any of the active quests if you need that as an objective and it will update that quest and then update the UI so you know your objectives are uh, where you're at with that you know one out of three or two out of three uh, depending on the requirement and what you've done so far Item required is for the delivery. Um, I think this is going to be more simple than the events for the kills because I think I could just do, um, you know, this is the item you require, this is how many you require, and then it'll just search through your inventory. So after you accept the quest, um, it'll check your inventory to see if you already have that quest items, and then this might even turn from blue to green immediately if you have the items. And then crafted item... Um, I'm going to set something up in the crafting script. So once you craft an item, it's going to send an event to the uh, the stat tracker as well to show you know that item has been crafted, and that will populate as you know car, um, one, two, three as you craft the items, and then once that's met, it will register to the quest giver again and show him. And tell him, you know, it's been completed. You could change your, your status to, uh, you know, to ready to be uh, completed. So you just have to go to the NPC, collect your award. All right. So that's that's the uh, scriptable quest. And that's how I'm handling 
this. So once a once the quest giver displays the quest and it's given to the player, and if the quest log is not full, the player can accept the quest and um, it will be removed from the inactive list, which you see here, the scriptable quest, and added to the active list. So the active list is basically the quest log. And if the player decides to, you know, cancel or, you know, delete the quest or it fails for whatever reason, um, it will be removed from the active list and it goes back to the inactive list. Now, once the actual, actual active quest is, the tasks are completed and you accept the rewards, it will go into the completed quest list. So you always have that as a, a reference back and uh, that will be used in the game as well for uh, other events within the game. Um, update kill quest progress. This is similar that the stat tracker will, um, or the event system will no be notified, you know, on enemy kill. It'll update the the, quest, uh, the kill quest progress. And that'll be able to update the status of the quest and then the UI on the objectives. And then similar to the, the gather and the crafting, which I haven't done details on yet. Because um, I still have to uh, update the other scripts to work. But I think for next week, I'm just going to focus on the kill quest and make sure the event system works. Um, okay, so complete quest, as I mentioned, if the objectives are met, if the player can receive rewards, it will remove from the active list and add to the completed list and then give the player rewards, gold, XP, reputation, bond, whatever. Um, and then once a quest has been completed, it will, let's see if it's here. So I have it set up so it will retrieve, the NPC will retrieve the next quest in the, the list. So based on the inactive list, that's, if there's any quest available for, let's say it's NPC ID farmer, quest ID one. And once a new quest needs to be retrieved, this might be quest ID two and then the farmer as the ID. So then it's gonna look for each quest and if it finds the quest ID of two with the farmer uh, ID it will return that quest to the uh, the method that's calling it and this is going to be on the uh, the quest the quest giver so on next available it's going to take the next quest and then uh, the current quest of that NPC will be the one we just got from the, the quest manager. Uh, we went over this already and, and at the beginning of the game it's going to assign the starting quest to the quest giver so as I mentioned before it's going to take the ID of the NPC and the quest ID of one. So every NPC is going to start off with their first tier uh, quest and it's going to be super simple depending on the NPC type. Um, the brawler, I think, might be, you know, get me a health potion, or the farmer might be, you know, kill a beetle, or something very simple that, you know, any player can do just to get them started, get them more comfortable with the, the whole system. So that's it for the quest manager, quest givers manager. This is just a list of all the quest givers. Uh, and I'll go show you that. So this is just here in my game manager and it's a list of right now all I have is the farmer and it's a reference to the farmer there in the scene and eventually I'll make the 17 other other classes but right now I'm just trying to work out the details and make sure the systems work at least for the first few before I start expanding into more of a, a uh, larger role of NPCs and different type of quests. So. Starting small, testing, making sure it works, and then uh, go from there. NPC UI Manager. So this handles the NPC name that pops up with the active hover. And then also the quest icon that I mentioned before. That's the uh, the NPC. Let me go into, the, into Unity here. So the NPC UI Manager has the text hover and then also has the exclamation point, which is which is this. And uh, 
every NPC will have to have a different one because each each of them will have a different status of their quest, or maybe some of them won't even have a quest, and um, that would be. Let me go back to the script here. Um, I'll skip ahead real quick to the quest giver. So quest status I hear I have available, displayed, active, and satisfied, or none. So quest giver might not have one. Um, satisfied will be green, so the objectives have been satisfied. Um, but none would be a category as well, and it wouldn't even show the exclamation point at that, at that point if there's no quest. Um, and that may happen if the, the NPC is sleeping or, you know, you, 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 it's not available to actually give the quest. If, if you've ruined your reputation with that NPC, it won't give you the quest. Um, now, going to the player interaction, I won't go into this too much detail, but um, I was using vo void or on trigger stay, but that doesn't update every frame, so I had to use void update. So the, the interactable player interaction Which is pretty much this collider here. Um, so this is this is the way that I interact with all different things, you know, chests or NPCs or anything in the world that you could um, interact with. And that's the main thing, main focus. So I wanted to keep it in one spot so it was more simple to to test. And I think it's working well so far. So you know, tilling or seeding and anything like that, anything this interacts with, it's going to. Uh, It's going to show up in the interaction bar that you saw before with the speak or accept quest. Um, so this is pretty much for the NPC what you, what you do in each instance. You know, if the if the quest giver has a quest and the status of it, it'll change the text, and um, you could change the color as well of whatever the text is. I just left it for white for now. Uh, but different actions might have different things. You know, steel might be red. Or lockpick might be red because it might be a you know punishable action, uh, while giving might be maybe yellow or something like that. Um, but in any case, this is how I set up the the actual interaction with the player and the NPC. Quest, as I went over before, that's the scriptable object. If you want to make one, you have to use the create asset menu. And quest giver, we went over a little bit before, but it pretty much has the the status of the quest. Um, you know, if there's an available quest, you have um, it becomes yellow. Then it's cyan if it's displayed. I'll probably remove that. That'll just show a dialog window instead of the actual quest and the information. And um, blue would be active, so the quest is actually active, which means it's accepted. So it's displayed. If you click accept of the quest, it'll be in your quest log. It'll be active. And then once you satisfy the objectives, you know, kill three item, three enemies, collect three items, or craft three items, whatever, um, it'll be satisfied. It'll become up as green. And then once it's complete, it will. There's no real status for complete because once it's complete, it'll just get removed, and the the NPC will get the next quest available. So there's really no need to put a quest status complete that I see right now because it just. Um, it's almost like the strikes or the uh, outs in baseball. So they only have two shown. And then, uh, you know, after the third out, there's no point of putting the three. They just go to commercial. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's basically it. I have my enums here, uh, NPC ID, to show the NPC that it's referring to. And quest status, quest type, and then everything else related to this game so far. And this has been working very well as well um, because every class might use different type of enum and wanted to keep one main area that I could access it. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. For next week, I'm going to try to work a little bit more on the quest system and maybe learn more about the event system to... Uh, decide if like you know which enemy has been killed and then notify the other classes and the quest giver that the objectives have been updated uh but for now that's it thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments below